lovely Leo. Okay, I chose these because I thought they were kind of fiery. They are, they're a summer deck, but you know, you're a summer sign, so you bring the sun with you, Leo. What do we need to know for my lovely Leo's sun, moon, ooh, rising? So in the past few months, your readings have been, oh gosh, <laughs> what I call burning down the house, which for any other sign would sound really alarming, but for you, it's not. It's kind of cathartic. It's what you do when you need to shed your skin. For some reason, I've always associated Leo with snakes and with a kind of, when a, a, when a snake sheds its skin, it's quite dramatic. And then you sort of move to the next stage. So I feel like probably the rest of 2024 actually is very much preparing you for 2025. We're in this sort of, it's not really a waiting room, because Leo doesn't really do waiting rooms. It's more of a sort of fiery antechamber. First overall energy card you get is the Hierophant. Gorgeous, gorgeous card. But also I've had this for you for months, maybe even a couple of years. Something about setting up your own spiritual business, answering some kind of spiritual call, becoming a leader, it's leadership. And leadership doesn't necessarily mean becoming a manager or a CEO or whatever it is. Sometimes leadership is about kind of what I'm getting for you, what I'm channeling for you, is leading from the bottom. Like, you know, the base chakra is red and then it kind of like sets off this traffic light of power. I'm feeling like you're sort of leading from with fire from the bottom, almost like a phoenix, like whoosh, like that. That's what I'm being channeled. I know, not bad, eh? So it feels like you're bringing the fire. It feels, you, this could be a production. It could be starting your YouTube channel. It could be doing Instagram. It could be, God knows, becoming a teacher, spiritual. I mean, Leo's very suited to this guru kind of a role. Either way, you're attracting others, you're helping others, you're leading. And that's pretty exciting. And you're leading with fire. And then in your own personal life, I've got this five of cups. There's something you need to let go. There's something you need to mourn. There's something you need to process. So you're doing that at the same time. I know Leo is always an overachiever. So you will do too much until you get kind of like, <laughs> I've seen my Leo friends do this. You know, the stamina that a Leo has is incredible. You're like, wow, I can't believe you're doing this, 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 and this. And then all of a sudden you stop, you know, it's like you go on a, a sort of silent retreat for three days to recharge your battery. So just be aware, nice, just be aware that there's some kind of emotional weather, you know, a kind of experience moving through. As you move through, and this is a transitional phase for you, you need to say goodbye to what you need to leave behind. Okay. I think that really resonates with some of you because I can kind of feel it. Okay. I'm just taking a few more cards. We're going to look at life purpose and career and we're going to look at your love life there will be an extended reading as there is every month what we do for that is we take the cards that come up in your love life and we do an extended reading based on whatever has come up whatever is weird and wonderful and needs looking at and channeling and all that good stuff the first link in the description box if you want that if this really resonates let's have a look at your cards let's bring the camera in a bit right I'm glad I chose this deck. It was the right decision. It's all this orange and fire. Page of Cups is here. We've had a lot of Page of Cups, actually. Nearly every sign has had some Page of Cups, which is really nice. You don't necessarily, when it comes to your life purpose and career, need to go looking or persuading or sending out your CV or any of the things that we traditionally associate with an in inverted commas job search okay this is more about 
people bringing it to you. So, I don't know, let's say you were wanting to train to be a therapist or a counsellor. People are coming to you. People get referred to you. People are talking to you. There's this feeling that people are bringing to you that which you love anyway, which is a very nice place to be. It's also invitations. Emotionally, the Page of Cups is also about apologies and forgiveness. And I'm just getting for some of you with this Five of Cups that that's in the mix. For a few of you, you feel you need to apologise to someone else. You feel maybe you don't regret it, but you don't like the way you went about something and you feel like you want to apologise to someone else. For others of you, you are receiving. Because remember, the Page of Cups is about someone offering, someone giving, someone coming forward. You are receiving an apology about whatever this Five of Cups issue was, situation, issue, behaviour, whatever it was, the sadness or the dismay that it caused you. And I don't often use the word dismay, so I feel like dismay is about right, actually. It's somebody apologising for that. And that doesn't necessarily, because I'm getting quite an interesting vibe from this, it doesn't necessarily make it all right, in inverted commas, or not all right. It gives you the opportunity to move to a different place about it and maybe let go of it, okay? Then we have the Four of Pentacles, Sun in Capricorn. And this is literally about where you're at in your life in terms of the boring stuff like finances, budgeting, assets, security, um, where you're at in terms of what you gather in towards yourself and what you bank. And this can be literal bank or it can be emotional bank financial bank, you know, but it's you receiving, but also sorting and safeguarding. I sometimes call it the don't touch your purse card. You know, you're working out your long term financial future. You know, it's just, it's, it is quite boring, but it's very, very necessary. Pensions, life insurance. I know you're just like, God, can I go to sleep now? whatever and for, for different people it's different things but whatever your long-term life security needs are you're going to be thinking about them and then we get the death card some of you this is a very sharp change in career we all have different reasons for doing jobs um very often the jobs that we're doing are for sort of temporary reasons. Very often the jobs that we're doing are out of necessity or what we feel is necessity at the time. It feels like, it feels like you can't ignore a calling anymore. Like you've looked at your finances and maybe you've got savings or whatever. Maybe you can afford to make the sharp turn. Maybe there's a backup plan you know, or you're just looking at your financial position and working out whether you are stable enough to take this turn. Now, it feels like it's voluntary, but it isn't really. We're in eclipse season. It's the death card. We've got a big old howling full moon there. You might as well kind of go with the very sharp flow. It's going to be good for you but it was coming anyway. Lean into it, okay? Lean into it because the universe thinks you're ready. Should we look at your love life? I'm very excited actually about all of it. High Priestess coming up here. This is like a bridge between the life purpose and your love life. So High Priestess, this is you not always a card associated with Leo, but actually not often talked about. Um, Leo's, what's the word for it? Because it's like, High Priestess is normally associated with Pisces in a sort of, you know, Priestess at the temple, 
um, getting the messages and that kind of telepathic whatnots and all that. And yes, very good. I'm a Pisces. I can relate to it. But there's a high priestess about Leo, which is about bringing fire. Exactly what this card is about. This is a very important card for you, Leo. You are bringing this sort of magical fire. And this is in your relationships. It's in your life purpose. It's in what you're showing others and how you're showing up yourselves. And it's giving you some interesting potentness, potency, potentness, potency. Like you know things. You always did, but you sort of know that you know things now and that it's useful if you can use that, if you can funnel that, if you can direct that. Queen of Pentacles, nice. Very sensible, very paced. Not, um, normally it'd be the Queen of Wands, which is great, but Queen of Pentacles, when it comes to your love life, this is about long term. It's about what's good for me, what's good for you. I knew you were gonna get that card. That's so weird. Queen of Wands. Burning down that house. Here you are with your big fat full moon in the background. Okay, Queen of Pentacles is slow and very steady and gentle and yin. Queen of Wands is yang and she's, this is both sides to you when it comes to your love life. Leo has a wild side. It can be repressed for almost a lifetime or you can just let it all get out there. Sometimes it just pops out in different ways and you're like, yes. <laughs> this is both sides to you at the moment and you kind of need both sides. I love this. This is about passion. It's about owning your own pleasure. It's about yourself as a deep, fiery, passionate creature. Six of Cups, God, okay. The only reason I say God is because the Six of Cups is old feelings sometimes, childhood sweetheart type feelings, home feelings. It can be exes. And we've got that Five of Cups at the top, which you can see in contrast to all the other cards. It's a bit gloomy, isn't it? This is sweet. But what is it? Six of Cups, it's slightly karmic, it's like a soulmate card. Oh my gosh. Two of Cups, yum. This is nice. This is, I keep wanting to say the word sweet and you're bringing the fire to this but somebody recognises you, they're not like you at all, okay? They're not bringing fire in the same way, but we don't need two people firebombing, you know, the relationship. You bring enough fire for the both of you, they bring something else. They bring this sweetness and this kind of relationship that you have going on between you is very, Oh, this is just lovely, to be honest. This is a person who's got your back. Now, this could be about this apology with the Page of Cups. This can be a reuniting type spread, okay, where you let go of somebody who was actually the one, somebody who was actually good to you. And maybe it wasn't the right time when it was and now it is, or it becomes the right time. This could also be somebody who misses you, the Two of Cups. It's almost like a montage from an 80s film of like, I'm getting the whole, we went to the fairground and maybe you did these things and got a bag of donuts and then he won me a teddy bear and then she did this, you know, that kind of thing. Two of Cups, Venus in Cancer, very, very, very beautiful. Some of you may be on the Leo Cancer cusp. That's been coming up a lot in my Cancerian readings. 
The potential here is very nice. It's building. We've got the Three of Wands. Three of Wands is a card of getting the Ace, which is the original kind of fire stick, and then this multiplies to two, and then the energy can't be contained within the two, so it sprouts another one, and we've got three. This is the energy of a building passion, building the differences between you. You're very different, you and this person, but it really kind of works. It sparks between you. It's passion, it's feeling, it's sensual, it's gorgeous. Loving this for you. And there it is. Okay, judgment. Now, as a tarot reader, when I get the Six of Cups, I'm looking out for judgment. And when I get judgment, I'm looking out for the Six of Cups. Pretty much to a, to a letter, really. If I get the two of them, particularly in this kind of a run, X's are in the frame somewhere or going back to old issues in a same relationship or revisiting patterns in a new relationship, but they're old patterns. There's something about karma. There's something about revisiting. There's something about lost love and going back and... I'm getting channeled. We still feel the same. Gosh. We still feel the same. I'm going to look for my Love Oracle cards. This is very interesting, Leo. This is not an energy that normally comes up for you, actually. You know, normally... Um, it's a very fiery energy for you. But this is kind of sweet. Okay, I'm going to take some Love Oracle cards. Let's see what we get. In the extended reading, I'm going to look at this. I'm going to look at Judgment, Six of Cups, Five of Cups, what is lost, what can still be salvaged, what is the best way forward, how do they feel and how do you feel okay oh i could mm. goosebumps goose bumps leo I'm dying to know all about this. Woof. <laughs> I might do a meow and a neigh. Okay. Goodness. Right. Hang on. Proposal. An offer or proposal in the near future that comes as a surprise. It's not a surprise to me. And I don't think it's a surprise to you either. The X. We're opening the X-Files, whichever way it goes, okay? I love this lamppost. Wish we still had lampposts like this. Also, we're looking at illusions. Be aware of love's illusions and see reality clearly. Well, okay. I'm gonna look at the shadow side. I'm gonna look at the X. I'm gonna look at Six of Cups, Two of Cups judgment and five of cups you did come up as the high priestess you do already know what you need to know you're a leo you always know anyway um you may not want to act on what you know or you may want to go against what you know but you know okay i can't wait Leo, leave me a comment. Let me know how it resonated. If you want to join me for that extended reading, I'm going there right now. Grab another drink. It's the first link in the description box. See you on the other side. Namaste.